It's so interesting because I came to know you through the song and video, video mm -hmm. and these are the lyrics that uh, resonated with me and millions of others. I'm not the average girl from your video, and I ain't built like a supermodel, but I learned to love myself unconditionally because I am a queen. Now, looking back, those are the words, looking back, you were 24 years old at the time mm -hmm. you wrote that song. Mm -hmm. Were you living that space? Because, I mean, when I look at my journals, I have my journals from when I was 15, 18, 19, so do and 24. I. Yeah. 24, I was not feeling like a queen at all. Yeah. Were you, were, were you able to fully live that message, or was that the message you wanted to live? I wasn't able to fully live the message, but it wasn't my intention to make anyone believe that I was living it. Mm -hmm. It was... A musical affirmation. I just wanted to affirm that, you know, mm -hmm. and I was talking to myself and I yes. had no idea that it was gonna resonate like that with people. I had no mm -hmm. idea that any of this was gonna happen. So interesting. So when you say I learned to love myself unconditionally because I am a queen, that was an affirmation for you. You are reaching for that. I'm reaching for that. Yeah. But to affirm that for yourself, it means somewhere inside yourself, you know, it to be true. And that's what I was going to say. Yeah. I knew that I had that in me. Yeah. I just was growing into it. Mm -hmm. At the time, I came in thinking like, you know, thinking the sky's the limit and I can do whatever is put on my heart to do because it's put on my heart mm -hmm. to do. But then I had this experience at the Grammys. Mm -hmm. The first year I went to the Grammys, I was nominated for seven and it was really out of the blue because I hadn't sold that. I had sold maybe 800,000 albums mm -hmm. and I got nominated for seven Grammys. Whoa. And so the show came and I lost all of them. And it was this big conversation for ever, all over the radio for years, years. Yeah. But you know, for the first two months, it was all over the radio and why, and how could she, you know. Be nominated for seven Grammys right? and not win and one. And it ended up being called a shutout. Yeah. And so a couple of times in a couple of rap songs, I've heard people refer to it as the India Ari. Yeah. What if you get India Ari at the Grammys? Like uh -huh. it's this thing. And I realized two things about that now. And one is that, that really was God's way of giving me a breakthrough because I was on everybody's lips all of a sudden because I lost, but I, everybody was still talking about me and they had so much love for me and compassion about me. And then my album sales shot up, but all I felt was maybe, uh, maybe I'm not meant to have all of that. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but it, maybe I didn't deserve, maybe the I didn't, it didn't feel like deserve. Well, yeah, maybe I didn't deserve at the yeah. time. It didn't feel like deserve. It just felt like maybe that's just not how, I'm built. Maybe I wasn't built for that. You know, yeah. I wasn't the prom queen. I wasn't the this. I wasn't, why would everybody want to give me all these? Why would I win yeah. winning seven Grammys? That sounds nuts. Like, that yeah. doesn't even sound like something that would be my life. And did all that self-talk. But I also, underneath all that, in hindsight, I realize now that I was scared of failing and I was scared of succeeding. And I just wanted to just be in a safe space face and not grow too big or be too little. I just wanted to just stay. Yeah. And when I first got those Grammy nominations, I had heart, chest pains. I was having chest pains when I really should have been celebrating and enjoying. And Stevie Wonder called, right? And like, I remember I was laying in the bed in my hotel and I just started to pull the blanket over my head in the daytime. Yeah. And I was just gonna pull the blanket over my head. And Stevie Wonder called and he said, this is great, what's happening for you? Are you excited? This is before the show, this is the nomination yes. day. Are you excited? I just think this is wonderful. So many people are gonna hear your music and you know, mm -hmm. the whole thing. And I was like, well, yeah, yeah, I guess it is good. I'll call you back. <laughs> I just felt so, <laughs> wow. I couldn't take it in, but And what did I'm you do now. the night, what did you do the night the Grammys are over? everybody's going to the after Grammy parties mm -hmm. and you've lost all seven. I went to a party briefly and then I went to my hotel room and wrote in my journal mm -hmm. Did and you cry? I talked to my mom. Were you upset? I was upset and I was, I was hurt. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I've worked my way out of doing and I knew that I needed to was comparing myself to other people. That is, it just poisons everything. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, even the clothes you choose to wear that day or what you're gonna do with the music production or how you're gonna sequence your, it poisons everything. Cause you, I mean, your real job in the world is to be you. Comparing yourself to other people just, I think that hurt me more than anything. 
and I, you know, that I didn't hurt want to you do it. or you hurt you by I doing mean, that? I mean, allowing myself to go there so much in my yeah. head yeah. hurt me. Yeah. I, but isn't it what hurts everybody, whether you're a store clerk, comparing yourself to yeah. other people, a lawyer, a teacher, a mom, very human experience. Yeah.